giant steel mills in Salzgitter, Germany, British troops are rushed as the Germans try to prevent the dismantling of these modern plants that once employed 50,000 men. The machinery already dismantled, the demolition goes through on schedule as the West makes sure that no future German war machine will run on steel made here. Premier Joseph Stalin cheerfully applauds for himself an old Russian custom as 2,000 top Russian and foreign communists give their number one comrade a real party party in Moscow's Bolshoi Theater in honor of his 70th birthday. The guest of honor obliges his hosts with another short round of applause. Though the party was held before Christmas, these films just reached America. Tired of clapping, Mr. Stalin tried to bring the meeting to order. But the crowd wants more. Yes, even in Russia, the boss sometimes gets overruled, like once every 70 years. Salvage ships prepare to bring up the British submarine Truculent, which carried 64 to their death in the Thames estuary. As her conning tower comes to the surface, with it comes one of the life jackets, which her crew never had a chance to use, as the sub, rammed in the dark by a freighter, sank in less than a minute. Pilot Bill Chena climbs onto, not into, his plane, finds a comfortable chin rest, and then takes off on the world's smallest piloted airplane, the Weeby. The 30 horsepower engine not only takes the 15 foot flying midget off, it takes her up, 9,500 feet up. This may not set a world's altitude record, but it's history's highest piggyback ride. Aboard this Tudor 5, Britain's largest airliner, 83 Welsh rugby fans were flying home from Ireland where their team had won a championship. The 200-mile flight from Dublin lay behind. Only 100 yards ahead lay Cardiff's airport. They never made it. Three passengers seated in the tail walked away unscratched. All 80 others aboard were killed in the worst plane crash in history. It's parachute jumping at its most spectacular as the Navy tests emergency escape methods over El Centro, California. Slow motion heightens the drama of a delayed chute opening. After an eternity of falling, the pilot pulls his ripcord. But look out, the chute's fouled, it's not opening. The pilot finally releases his fouled chute. It had been fouled on purpose to test new techniques for getting rid of faulty chutes. This avoids the possibility of their fouling the extra emergency chute, which now opens. A second pilot jumps, smoke marking his fall as he swirls crazily through space. Can those twin miniature chutes bring him down safely? Finally, the pilot opens his regular chute. With planes flying at near sonic speeds, parachutes would be ripped to shreds if pilots hit the silk as soon as they bailed out. So the Navy perfects new techniques, and now the pilots come down, standing up. In France, Papa casts an admiring eye at his daughter's spring outfits, and well, he might. They're the first word from Paris on the last word for spring evenings created by famed French designer Christian Dior. Sylvia's breathtaking net gown has a tight strapless bodice. Its wide skirt, ankle length in front, trails into a huge flounced train trimmed in lace. Poor Papa. Imagine having to keep three daughters in Paris originals. Alla's strapless creation center is also of net, encrusted with shell-like paillettes. Ahead lies an evening of dinner and dancing of Paris in the spring. Sylvia chooses a scarf of white fox. The experts say that the styles of the 20s are here to stay. So take a good look at them, men. You're going to be seeing lots of numbers like these and paying for them, too. A 
new sports craze comes to the European Alps. It's ski bobbing. The ski bob looks like a cross between a bicycle and a baby carriage, but it will carry the sportsman downhill almost as fast as if he were riding skis alone. Designed by a young architect, it requires no skiing skill, just the ability to steer your way down the rolling slopes. Skiing was once a sport for daredevils. Now it's as easy as riding a kiddie car. Remember the old-fashioned sled you had as a kid? It had no steering bar. You steered with your feet and some rope attached to the runners. Well, that same sled has become the basis of a national sport in Czechoslovakia. 49 contestants whiz down a two-mile course, reaching speeds up to 30 miles an hour in this championship event. Here comes the winner, Rudolf Musil, captures the title. Best sledder in all Czechoslovakia. In British Columbia, top skiers from many nations get a bird's eye view of some of the finest scenery in the Canadian Rockies. Of course, you're not so apt to enjoy the beauties of nature when you land on your neck. This is the famous 1,100-foot Revelstoke ski jump, the longest and largest in North America. As they have all year, the world champion Norwegians fly away with highest honors. Arnfinn Bergman leaps 266 feet for a hill record. Here's another unhappy landing, and the contestant who has only one aim, to recapture the runaway ski he left behind. <laughs> 